Hello, um, my name's Hannah Fluck. I am Senior National Archaeologist at the National Trust, and I'm also Vice Chair for Europe of the Climate Heritage Network. I've been an archaeologist for several decades, and in that time have drawn together experience of working across public sector, private sector, within research, and now most recently within the charity sector. Um, I've been reflecting over the past few years on our relationship in particular with environmental um, challenges that we are facing. I think we all know that we're facing a biodiversity and climate crisis. That presents an existential crisis, not just for society, for the natural world, but also for our heritage. And the drivers for change that affect archaeology are closely linked to the direct impacts of that crisis. Things like flooding, rainfall, sea level rise, um, coastal erosion, landslips, all of these challenges, but also to people's responses to those. Those responses are going to be writ large across our landscape. We are at the beginning of an era that will see a scale of change to the way in which we use our land and landscapes that hasn't been seen for centuries and in a way that will be legible for millennia. I think it, it, it's hard to forget um, that actually the majority of our archaeological sites are located within agricultural land. Agricultural land makes up over 70% of the land coverage of the UK. So while the pressures of development, developer-funded um, investigations in some of our more urban areas are clearly important, we really can't forget the wider context in which our archaeological deposits and sites are located and the challenges that they face as people respond to these environmental pressures. So we must consider the future of archaeology against that backdrop. And therefore, when we talk about the public value of archaeology, we must include environmental value within that, within that context. Um, the National Trust is doing this. Um, our work is driven by public value. We say we are for everyone, forever. Um, and we also have clear commitments to respond to the biodiversity and climate crisis, being net zero by 2030, improving the quality of our land for biodiversity, um, ambitious targets set to do so. We own uh, nearly 4,000 kilometres of riverbanks and we own 250,000 hectares of land. The, the challenges that we face are in some ways a, a microcosm for the wider sector. And I would make an open invitation to those of you working in other areas of archaeology to, um, to join us, to talk to us, to, to join a community sharing those experiences so that we might be able to share some of what we learn as we begin to rethink what archaeology might mean within that context for the future. I want to welcome the manifesto. I think in particular the emphasis on the needs for data sharing and collaboration and research-driven um, context for working are incredibly important. The um, two points in particular I think are worth emphasising. One around the data. Our data are environmental data that might seem like an obvious thing to say. As archaeologists, we totally understand that archaeological sites and deposits represent human activity within past landscapes, lost landscapes, closely connected to understanding the biodiversity, the geological context, hydrological context in which these places um, were used and engaged with and created through the past. But other people don't necessarily understand that. And if we want to be relevant and engaged in how society responds to these future challenges, we absolutely need to be pushing that case that our data are environmental data, that we have something valuable to say about understanding the environmental context of our places, not just in the past, but for the future. And in order to do that, we need to share information. And we need to share information not just amongst ourselves and with the public and with wider communities, society but also with other specialists with those people who are making those specialist decisions for the environmental um, responses to to environmental change those people managing flood um, responding to flood risks for instance or creating habitats 
to um, support our biodiversity through the, the time of crisis. And that is, uh, again, closely connected to that collaboration, that sense of the need for us, which is so well recognised in the manifesto, to really be working together. Um, that recognition of that connection between research and practice, um, absolutely, but also across other sectors. Um, what we know is relevant to others, even if they don't necessarily know about it. So while some of these challenges that we're facing are going to make us feel uncomfortable, we will lose sights and we won't be able to record them necessarily um, because of the, the pressures that we're facing. We will um, need to make hard decisions um, about what it is that we, we record and how and how we share that information and how we manage places that might have seemed stable for many um, years um, through some of those changes. I think if you don't feel uncomfortable um, in, in facing the, 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 the responses and then understanding the climate and biodiversity crisis, then you probably haven't understood it right. But that's OK. The new archaeology, the future of archaeology, lies in really drawing on our ability to respond and adapt and understand places and people in those places through time that can give us the strength and, and the opportunity to share that understanding with others, with wider society. And archaeology is an essential part of that future, but only if we make an effort to make ourselves relevant, to share that information and to collaborate and work with others in order to do that. Thank you.